And we actually almost started by accident. Uh, me and my partner, uh, Nick, back then were working at IBM. IBM was wanted to uh, basically outsource the project that we were working on. And we used this as an opportunity to start a small consulting business working on that same project. In the 2000s, uh, we got in discussions with a Dutch company, uh, Netlink, that was interested to expand their engineering capacity and was looking for potential acquisitions in Eastern Europe. And then the then the .com bubble burst. And Pramfa, being the largest in Europe, was very heavily hit by this thing. And, and we ended up in a situation where we had a relatively big team, but basically no projects. And at that time, we kind of used the opportunity to buy back our shares from Pramfa and rebranded the company to, to be an mm -hmm. We started by developing a technology that was built with the vision to uh, basically allow us to create a virtual cable company, to deliver video to the big TV screens in people's living rooms without any hardware. Lunchhof was the first Bulgarian fund back then, and they just started. Early bird, this was the first early bird fund uh, in Eastern Europe. We had a lot of installs, about 10 million installs uh, on the app already. Uh, but if you look at the retention numbers, they were not exciting. Mm -hmm. And those 10 millions were actually organic. We didn't spend a dime on, on user acquisition. Through the experience with Flips, we managed to tap into different content verticals and kind of test different, uh, different verticals, different business models. And Fight was something that we actually did a few events within Flips, and, and we realized the potential. Looking at live programming and sports was a very natural thing to do. And then within sports, there are different business models, but we looked at the, at the verticals that are mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. popular on, on pay-per-view uh, because pay-per-view allows us to do revenue share based deals. It's a segment where the event organizer works with multiple distributors. So none of the distributors has the exclusive right. We, we have 1.6 uh, million registered users. Uh, as I mentioned to you, we have uh, 250 content partners mm. under contract, including a lot of the big guys. We do over uh, 1,000 live events per year. We launched uh, a subscription service just a couple months ago, and we have a five-digit number of subscribers already. Interestingly enough, we're still competing mainly with, uh, with traditional distributors, uh, meaning cable and satellite companies uh, in the U.S. Uh, if you look at kind of the big pay-per-views, they're generally available across all the major distributors. So we don't have exclusivity in those cases for our core markets, let's say for the U.S. But then we have exclusivity in many cases for uh, different regions outside of the U.S. Even though we, we focused on combat sports as our uh, beachhead strategy, uh, our ambition is to go to other uh, sports verticals as well and replicate the same business model now that we have the platform kind of the digital marketing capabilities and, and everything else to uh, succeed in other content verticals. In fragmented markets, generally speaking, the aggregators always win. Because from, from end user perspective, you don't want to go to the website of uh, Paramount and Columbia and all the other studios to, you don't even care who is the producer of the movie. Uh, you just want to watch your content. You want one single destination place with great user experience, great content discovery, where you could find any content of interest.